You're cramming for an exam the night before the final. You glaze over all your notes, skim through your textbook, and finally end up chatting with your friends about last week's party rather than quizzing them on what they've learned. You leave the library feeling defeated and end up almost failing the exam the next day. The worst part is you barely remember what you even learned in the class, let alone how you're going to apply it to future jobs. We've all been there before. There's never enough time for studying, and there's certainly never enough bandwidth to truly understand difficult things on a regular basis. Learning is hard. It's a workout for our brain. And sometimes we forget that building a connection in your brain is like building a muscle. It takes time, effort, and deliberate practice. So this begs the question, how can you easily learn difficult things? Through a combination of my own experience, research, and applied methods, I wanted to break down the process that I follow to learn hard concepts. There are five steps I typically take. Association, visualization, an example, implementation, and rubber ducking. Now, repeating this process is a bonus. The first step is association. This just means telling a story. As humans, we've always been so fascinated with telling each other about past events or even imaginary ones. A recent interview with a group of students that competed to memorize the digits of pi revealed that many students use mnemonics to remember the numbers. This was further extrapolated into the major system. Instead of remembering 3.14 159, each digit was associated with a sound and then converted into an image so they could remember a story instead of memorizing numbers. For example, one may make up a story using the first one or two letters of each word and associating it with a number. The old foreman opened fire near or 3.14159. That sentence is a whole lot easier to remember than all of the numbers, right? Likewise, if I were to try to understand the concept of recursion for the first time, I may use a story to try to contextualize what's happening. For example, Darth Vader starts to create his clone army in preparation for the Clone Wars. Each day's clones that are created get added to the previous cumulative total. Now, because of the oddness of Darth Vader and his OCD tendencies, I mean, come on, this guy has a few quirks if he's trying to take over the entire Republic. If the total number of clones made after the previous day is even, he only creates half that amount the next day. If the total number of clones created after the previous day is odd, he creates double the amount that next day. He has an unlimited amount of days that he creates clones, but after he's created a thousand of them, he can stop building his army for the rest of the year. Essentially get into early retirement at that point. This story shows that there's a base case, 1,000 clones, a call stack, each day's creation that eventually gets Gets added to the total, and this influences or is an input to Darth Vader's actions the very next day. Like recursion, Darth Vader is acting on what he did that previous day and feeding himself input for the next. While this may not give you a full understanding of recursion, at least you're able to associate the term with the story, a strategy that starts to form an early understanding in the brain. I would just like to thank this video sponsor, Atlas VPN. I use Atlas VPN anytime I'm in a different country and I want to watch some Netflix from that country or some Disney Plus, they have different options there. So obviously you're going to need a VPN to actually do that. Developed by top cybersecurity specialists and IT engineers in 2019, Atlas VPN was created to make the internet more accessible and secure for everyone. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. It means that you can get a three-year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Time is running out, so get your deal by clicking the link in the video description below. Get the best VPN deal in the market. Enjoy the most affordable online protection for just $139 per month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Enjoy blazing speeds. Get comfy to stream your favorite show or upgrade your gaming experience at a lightning-fast speed. Protect unlimited devices. Atlas VPN protects all your devices with a single subscription. Stop ads and malware. This, this is more than just a VPN. It blocks all the malicious links, ads, and trackers, and notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. Save some coins while shopping online. Get the best deals while shopping online, including online subscriptions, airlines, hotels, and more. Don't forget to check out my description. I have several links that will take you straight to their website and give you that discount code. Now back to the video. The next step is visualization. 
This step is particularly important because reading the definition of something doesn't always translate to picturing how the concept works. The brain is set up in a way that visual stimuli and emotional response is easily linked and together the two form memories. In fact, around 40% of learners respond better to visual information than text alone. Simply seeing a picture allows users to recreate the experience in their mind. Luckily, there are always so many colorful examples of computer science concepts online. Let's use recursion as an example again. Recursion is just a function calling itself repeatedly until the base case is reached. To visualize this, we must first visualize a function calling another function. Let's say we have a function A that calls function B, which calls function C. When we reach function A and start executing the logic, we store function A on the call stack, and then navigate to function B, store that on the call stack, and then and finally get to function C. This is the end of the call stack and we can start popping whatever we stored in a first in last out fashion. Function C's results will be calculated and returned to function B, which will get returned to function A, where function A will be executed. Likewise, we can visualize recursion by just replacing the different functions with one function. Until a base case is reached, function A will repeatedly call itself with new input parameters. If function A looks like this and we're just calculating n factorial, then we may start with n and multiply the result with the previous result while passing in n minus 1 as a parameter every time function a is called again. Each call to function a will get stored on the call stack, and let's start popping once we reach the base case of n is greater than 0. The third step is looking at an example. Looking at an example gives weight to visualization. It allows your brain to practically look at how the information is used to execute and obtain a tangible result. The how is just as important as the why. All you really have to do here is Google an example of recursion. Let's use the Fibonacci sequence. And here's the kicker. Make sure to deliberately trace through the code to apply your learning to the example. Don't just look at the example and call it quits. Actually sit down and plug in a few input parameters, trace through the code, and then execute the logic like a written debugger. Compare your findings with the solution. Let's go through this example together. Let's go through five iterations of the Fibonacci sequence. We start with two numbers, one and one. We add the previous two numbers together and then pass that number and the previous number as the inputs to the same function. We can do this five times and trace through each iteration to get the cumulative total. Hopefully after this process, you can start to see how this concept is practically used in a program. The next step is to create your own example. Reading and digesting is a lot easier than producing something yourself. Once you've taken the time to learn from someone else's example, it's time to come up with your own. This may be easier said than done, but we can always go back to the example of Darth Vader's clones. Remember the constraints and base case value for this story? Well, we can code it out too. First, we'll start with a function called create clones. This function will return an integer for the number of days it takes Darth Vader to create a thousand clones. The input parameters will be the current total number of clones plus the current day's count. We will also return the count of the day once our total is equal to or more than a thousand clones. The constraint provided means we can use an if-else statement to check if the total is even or odd from the previous day's total. Then we can generate our total for the current day and use that plus the total as the input parameter for the next function call. And when first calling the function, we will pass in a randomly generated number between 1 and 10. Hopefully things are starting to click at this point, and if not, that's okay. Recursion is a hard topic. We can always rinse and repeat these steps as necessary to form better connections in our brains. In fact, the more we repeatedly review the information we learned, the better chance we have of moving the information from our short-term memory to our long-term memory. It works the connections like a muscle. The last step is to rubber duck or explain the concept to someone who doesn't know what it is. Now, this is more complicated than you might think. Instead of just explaining recursion to a random person, try to approach this process sequentially. First, try to explain the concept to a five-year-old. I mean, literally find a five-year-old and walk through the concept with them. You will really have to get creative as a five-year-old won't know what a stack trace is or even a function call for that matter. Next, find a 12-year-old. It doesn't have to be a 12-year-old, but just find someone older. You'll want to do this about four times until you're able to rubber duck with a person that actually knows what recursion is. You can be more technical in this conversation conversation and get feedback from the person you're rubber ducking with as they can catch your mistakes. Don't be too worried about saying the wrong thing as 
this is still an exercise for your learning and understanding of the topic, not the person you're explaining it to. After all of these steps, it helps to repeat the entire process. As I mentioned earlier, this strategy can be applied to almost any difficult skill. If you really focus on taking a deliberate approach to learning and repeating this process, you can apply it to concepts such as binary search trees, polymorphism, BFS, DFS, among many more. Forget about just computer science concepts. You can even use it to learn physiology, psychology, and accounting. Just allow yourself the grace of making mistakes and having a growth mindset. This will be vital when you dive into the learning process.